What's up wizards, today we're going to be talking about generic React components, which is a way of combining React and TypeScript to give yourself amazing DX. I would say that if you find yourself repeating component structure a lot, like you're making lots of components that tend to all do basically the same thing, then creating a generic component can often be what you need. I've got a free tutorial on TotalTypeScript.com that goes through a lot of this stuff, and so you can check that out if you fancy, but of course it's not required. But let's dive into generic components. Here we have a table component. And this table component takes in two props, takes in rows and render row. The way this is used is we basically call it down here or we'll create a component out of it. And we say we pass in the rows here, we've just got a user with the name of Matt. And then we pass in the render row. So this component is quite neat because we don't need to every time we use it go inside and map over the rows individually, we basically delegate that to the component itself, and then say, okay, grab these rows, and then we're going to just pass in the function that tells the components how to render the row. But you notice here, we've sort of developed a relationship between two of the props between rows and render row. Render row basically needs to know what the type of the rows are. And currently that is just typed as any. The reason for this, if we look at our table up here, these props, we have rows, any array, so we can pass in an, an array of anything. And we have a render row, which is react.fc, which is passed in any as the props. The way you would do this if you didn't know advanced TypeScript is you would say row and then pass in, let's say, id string, or you might need to manually keep these up to date. And there's no actual guarantee that what we have in this row here is in any way related to what's being passed in in the rows. So I could say id string, and actually now we're just, sure, accessing a property called id, which doesn't exist on the thing. It's just actually quite a lot of work and it's not very safe to keep this maintained. So it would be a lot more powerful, a lot easier to use if this row here just understood what rows were being passed in. Now we understand this, let's tell TypeScript to keep track of what type these rows are. The way we do this is we add a type parameter to this table. So I'm going to add in two angle brackets just before these little um, parentheses here. And you notice immediately they sort of add in something weird here. So just remove the second one. That's sort of adding in a React fragment for us. Thank you very much. And we're just going to add in a T row here. Immediately you notice that a bunch of stuff is happening and it's all pretty much horrible. Uh, our syntax highlighting has been screwed up. Everything's sort of breaking. That's because in this TSX file, TypeScript doesn't really know what we're supposed to be doing here. So to fix this, we can actually just give it like a, a comma here. Now TypeScript knows that this is a type parameter and we're kind of good to go. And this T row here, it's like a little slot for TypeScript to understand what type something is inside the props that are being passed. And so instead of any here, we can now just pass it in as T row. This table now has gone from being just a normal component to being a generic component because we've added a type parameter to this component. We can actually check what this is being inferred as with this nice little trick. If we basically say table here and we call it manually, we can hover over this call and we can see that it's being inferred as number. So rows number here, if we change these two strings, for instance, so ABC, you can see it's being inferred as string. So this little angle brackets thing here. So this means now that this function that we're calling is keeping track of the thing being passed in. That's great. But now we just need that string to be passed into react.fc here. And the way we can do that is to go up here and instead of any, we just mark it as T row. Now if we go back down to our table here, we can see that render row is now react.fc being passed in string. And there's one more thing down at the bottom here, which is it's now working inside our component call as well. So we have render row here, which is a react.fc with name string being passed to it. So the reason I got you to call it manually here is because there's no actual way if we hover over table, it doesn't actually show the type that's being inferred there, which is kind of annoying. But anyway, we are nearly done. But we do have an error up the top here, which is basically saying type T row is not assignable to type intrinsic attributes and T row. The reason for this is that we're spreading in this row into our render row here. So we actually need to add a constraint into T row because not everything can be spread essentially. So we need to constrain it to say this now should only be essentially a record of string and any. And what we're doing here is we're saying the thing we pass into T row here has to be an object of some kind. 
this means we can no longer pass things that are just like numbers here. So if we pass in one, two, three, for instance, then it's going to error because number is not assignable to this object thing. And because it's an object, that means that we can spread it in. I think this is a reasonable constraint because mostly what we're going to be rendering in this table are going to be objects. But now we have a generic table component, which whatever we pass in here into these rows, let's say we add in an ID as well, this will then be inferred into the row below it. This is absolutely amazing for using this across our code base and having a single component that can do a lot of heavy lifting across our application. I hope you enjoyed this explainer on generic components. Again, you can go to totaltapstrip.com, check out my React course, which has a massive free component and then a paid component as well. It's been really cool showing you these, of course. I will have another video and maybe a sort of floating head here that you can uh, say hello to and subscribe to. And please do like the video and share it around if you found it useful. But anyway, I will see you very soon.